Hello YouTube viewers welcome to my show Future Friday today we're going to take a look at the hydrogen economy or specifically why did it fail so let's dive right into it so what is hydrogen hydrogen in simplest term is a element it's very pure and it burns in the presence of oxygen so like earth's atmosphere it can burn and it if you want to make it in a liquid you have to cool it down to minus 252 degree centigrade basically it's almost as close to absolute zero that uh, things can go only one thing exists that can go even colder than that that is helium and uh, so suffice to say to make hydrogen into liquid which is used as you can see in rocket industry it's quite expensive process to you know liquefy it and the name hydrogen as we know it Uh, there are a lot of people who discovered it but the name the hydrogen the name that we have came from 1783 and you know gave him this this guy basically that time we didn't had camera so so we knew about hydrogen for quite some long time but uh, suffice to say we have lot of industrial use for hydrogen even today so why the interest in hydrogen economy come to the you know forefront in the first place you have to understand if you take 1 kg of hydrogen versus 1 kg the weight 1 kg of kerosene hydrogen is like don't even try to compare like i'll give you a simpler example all the engines rocket engines jet engine they are measured in specific impulse higher the number the more efficient it is not necessarily powerful but more efficient basically the mileage so this graph as you can see depicts uh, multiple engines that we have and uh, then this angle is the speed It, it's specified in mach speed like mach 1 mach 2 mach 3 so as you can see there is a steep curve as you have different different technology now there is a line dotted line that is depicting theoretical maximum of hydrocarbons like this is theoretically maximum allowed by laws of physics so this is here now this is what theoretical maximum of hydrogen is so hydrogen has a lot of power if you compare it by its weight and you have to understand when you burn hydrogen the benefit of that is the output basically if you are burning hydrogen in your car the output of that is water vapor so suffice to say we can't even create something that you know uh, harmless it's water basically it's just it's going to come out in vapor form but uh, suffice to say and the reason we got a lot of early interest in the fuel cell vehicles was because fuel cells make direct electricity there is no burning hydrogen then turning a you know then getting rotational energy we can just simply send hydrogen into fuel cell and get direct current out of it basically dc dc electricity out of it so this also you know uh, sparked a lot of interest because you know it was very efficient like if you have the hydrogen this is very efficient now and it can be made on site with only two components what do i mean by on site basically instead of petrol pump where you know you're pumping the hydrogen you can make the hydrogen right there all you would need is power source and water suffice to say wherever humans are it's quite readily available so it was possible to make hydrogen on site so what's the problem like uh, all the things i showed you they are proven they are absolute like they are scientifically true there are nothing about it is like you know hoax or things like that so one thing you have to understand hydrogen is super low density to give you a context how low density it is if you fill it up in a balloon it will go up and uh, we used to use that the reason we no longer use that is simply because it's flammable and uh, dangerous to you know have around kids so we now use helium but hydrogen is so light that it can carry its own mass and some uh, body around it and fuel cells the whole idea is not cheap fuel cell even to this day never became as cheap as internal combustion engine and uh, their power to their cost is simply pointlessly expensive just no point when trying to compare it and it acts more as a energy carrier now this this is the thing that people are forgetting about uh, hydrogen now it is it's not a energy source it's a energy carrier hydrogen is not naturally available only some places will have some small pockets of hydrogen but you can't dig hydrogen out of the ground you have to put energy in this is the same problem why you can't run your car on water It, you know hydrogen needs energy 
to make it like you will put electricity and water then you will get hydrogen or you can mine it somewhere but there is no place where you can mine it even though 90 percent of universe is made out of hydrogen in this planet it's not available in gaseous form you know at least not easy to extract and uh, one thing you have to understand the hydrogen because of this low density it's uh, it kind of frustrating to understand how bad the weight to uh, weight to the size ratio there is so think of it this way to get the maximum efficiency either you have to make a liquid uh, hydrogen as you can see which we do know how to make but as i told you it requires near absolute zeros so it suffice to say it's quite energy extensive or you need to do it in high pressure which itself takes energy not as much as uh, uh, cryogenics but still takes energy so all the thing you are doing to make hydrogen to refine it to purify it to liquefy it or to compress it you are putting so much energy into it at that point you have wasted a lot of energy just trying to get the fuel and i'm not even talking about the in inefficiency that's gonna come once you burn it in your fuel cell and to give you a simpler idea this is a very uh, nice image that describes it now this is a rough description of how much fuel mass versus size you need for 300 mile trip so for 300 mile you need roughly 33 kilogram of diesel and in liters how much uh, you know volume it's gonna take is 37 liters so uh, okay now for same range how much hydrogen do you need you need six kilogram and everybody's like yay here's the deal it will take 170 liter that is at uh, if you pressurize it to uh, around 700 bar which is like 700 times the atmospheric pressure so suffice to say this is the part that people forget about hydrogen is that weight wise yes your vehicle would be very light however the size of the tank that you need to carry that even at liquefied stage is ginormous the aerodynamic drag from it the sheer size and weight of it will reduce all the benefits that you're gonna get that's why we don't use hydrogen So let's talk about alternatives. You have to understand, the more steps you in, in, induce in something, the more expensive it becomes. So it's too expensive. Why it's too expensive? It has too many conversion in this pipeline. Let's say you want to run your car on hydrogen. To give you a uh, simpler understanding of this, this cross-section image that I'm showing is a Toyota fuel cell car. And as you can see, it has yellow things that you are seeing, those are hydrogen high pressure tanks they are not cheap they are very expensive they make lpg tank look cheap and you have a battery why you need a battery in that well fuel cell does not have like you know instantaneous power basically it's not like a internal combustion in which you press the accelerator it's going to give you more power it takes time there is a bit of lag love. so even if you open the fuel valve it will take few seconds and people want you know instantaneous when you want to press the accelerator you want your car to go it's not like okay it's going to take few minutes to you know catch up so for this reason they always have a battery pack to stabilize it you know when you need acceleration or when you are doing regenerative braking or things like that and suffice to say what does an electric car have battery and motor you already have it why not remove the things that are adding the cost you can remove a very expensive high pressure hydrogen tanks boom you saved money and uh, fuel cell which are idiotically expensive boom you saved money and all you have to do in return is just make the battery pack bigger now you have less things and uh, as i already specified it has too many conversions as i said if you want to run your car on hydrogen you have to have many steps like you're gonna collect water spend energy on that electrolyze it spend electricity on that then you're gonna f uh, refine filter and compress hydrogen again you're gonna spend energy on that then you're gonna put your hydrogen into the pressure tanks then that pressure tank uh, you know will feed fuel cell then the fuel cell will drive your motors so many steps all you can do is simply say okay i will put direct uh, electricity directly into my battery that's it so and you have to understand uh, in earlier days few, uh, the reason why hydrogen was looked at very seriously was very simple thing it could allow a large scale energy storage basically you're gonna electrolyze the water when you have surplus of electricity and at the peak demands you're gonna com uh, combust it or send it through a jet engine or a fuel cell fuel cells were not well they are still not cheap so 
to get the energy back. However, nowadays even grid scale battery packs are available and we are all familiar with Tesla's battery pack and this new kid in the block that we have, it's a container size battery, it's called a flow battery. Uh, they are Z cell batteries. Basically, they have liquid electrolytes that are moving and they are changing their chemistry to give you electricity in or out. So suffice to say, the uh, whole aspect of uh, not using battery for grid scale was A, at grid scale capacity, batteries are idiotically expensive. This is not. At two, and your batteries lose power over time. However, that's uh, true to some extent with hydrogen. Like, uh, of course, your tank's gonna leak a little bit, but you can calculate for it. So batteries, as you hold them for a very long time, they're gonna lose power. This, however, can hold its charge for 10 years. Yes, 10 years. They even come with warranty of that and they have no degradation of capacity. So let's say you built this as a you know power storage. Boom, your problem solved. So as, you, as we now see, cars make no sense. Energy storage are already better. So this, these are the final nail in the coffin why we don't see a hydrogen economy. I hope you liked my presentation. If you liked it, please like. If you didn't dislike it, leave a comment. Please subscribe. I make video every day. And as always, thanks for watching.